I'm painting right down to the snow edge there and I'm using my size 14 round brush here and I'm just going to paint some ultramarine mixed with some of the Indian red there wet in wet quite pale at the top I'm pretty much following the photograph as well I'm leaving some light gaps there as well and tilting my watercolour painting here to the right and just sort of collecting some of the puddles as they gather. I'm using some ultramarine now with a tiny touch of the Indian red and painting wet on wet, just where you see the really bright blue sky in the photograph there. I've added some more Indian red and as you can see, I'm actually painting on a tilt here. So you can see all the puddles at the right hand side and just painting a very pale wash here on the left hand side, very watered down paint of the ultramarine and the Indian red tilting as I go. I'm wetting the snow area now, being careful not to touch the sky, so I'm leaving a gap there. And I am gonna paint the same colors that I used in the sky, wet into wet, just in the foreground there to create some shadows in the snow. I'm using Daniel Smith's Lunar Black. You can use any black or Payne's grain. I've got a little pot here. I'm mixing a puddle of paint and I'm gonna use my twig and I'm gonna dip it into this puddle and start to paint branches and tree trunks. So I've got a lovely big puddle here and here's my twig straight from the garden. I've sharpened it with a pencil sharpener. You can use a craft knife and I'm just gonna draw sort of lines here and there, just really trying not to touch the snow no, painting or drawing wet on dry just keep dipping your twig in um, it really is quite effective if you don't like using the twig you can just use um, a small paintbrush a size two round brush if you like or even a rigger or a liner brush and just start sort of drawing these marks in it's so much fun it doesn't have to follow the photograph there's no way that either one of us could actually paint all those twigs and uh, branches and tree trunks but you can give an impression and really try to have fun with it and you know as you can see here when the paint starts to run out on your twig that doesn't matter you can do all the sort of smaller twigs and branches at the top of the trees where it's a little bit lighter and the other thing is you can just scribble these on as well if you're a beginner don't worry just have fun with it if you are a little bit worried do have a practice first of all it can be very liberating especially paint Painting twigs with a twig.
To paint the larger tree trunks, I've swapped to my size four round brush. I'm painting wet on dry, that mixture of the lunar black, you can use Payne's grey of course, or any black will do. And I've actually added a touch of burnt sienna in there as well. You could use burnt umber. And I'm just gonna work my way along now, painting the larger tree trunks and branches. So don't worry too much about getting everything right. What I'm doing here is I'm just using my size four brush with that mixture of the lunar black and the burnt sienna. And I am just literally scribbling with my brush because you've got so much dense detail there. I just wanna get some information down and give an impression. So literally I am just letting my brush fly about wherever it wants to go, not even thinking too much, but just looking at the overall impression, working wet on dry and just every now and then get just loading my brush up again so you may get some nice dry brush effects as well and it's a great way of loosening up but also to portray and create this lovely group of winter trees here. I've swapped now back to my twig and I'm just sort of dipping it into the paint here, painting or drawing again, lots and lots of branches going across each other and just really trying to get as much detail and information as I can.
you can dry the paint in here, I haven't, but I'm just using a natural sponge just to sort of print some foliage here. If you don't have a natural sponge, you can use an old scourer or even stipple with your paintbrush, but this is a little bit of burnt sienna and pink mixed up together. Any pink will do, and it's just to create a lovely warm sort of colour here in the photograph. If you are using a sponge, try to tap really gently to get a really lovely textured effect. What I'm doing now is I'm using my twig again. I'm just scratching into this damp paint to create some lighter marks and lighter twigs here and there. You could use a plastic card to do this as well, but it's just to create some more light and textures. What I'm doing now is I'm using my spritzer bottle and I'm just using it to spray onto this damp paint just to kind of re-wet it again so to make some of the edges of the foliage and even some of the twigs and branches a little bit softer. Now you could leave your painting here. I'm going to take mine a little bit further though. I'm using my size 14 brush. It's damp and I'm just using some of the paint that's already on there and a very sort of dilute burnt sienna with a touch of the black there. I'm just working my way along with my damp brush just at the bottom of the trees there just to bring everything together and you lose a little bit of light here but it really does create a wonderful contrast between the light and white of the snow and the dark dense trees just above there so I'm just using this very sort of watered down wash as you can see there using my size 14 brush working my way along both right and left at the edges here. I've just rinsed my brush there and just softened that hard edge with a clean brush. I'm adding some of the Luna Black now, damp into wet here with my size 10 brush, just to create some real dark just at the bottom here, again to create some more drama really and contrast with that white and light of the snow. I am spattering some of the Luna Black. You can use the Burnt Sienna here. You don't have to do this. I quite like it. And I'm also sprinkling some table salt onto the damp paint. And that should create some light textures later. I'm using some black brusho. I will put a link in the description below all about brusho. But it creates some lovely textures and beautiful colors. I'm actually just putting it around the edges of the tree branches at the top there. So not all over and I'm going to spritz the brush show now with my spritzer bottle just to kind of reawake it and you get these amazing effects as you can see which will happen. You can get a little bit carried away, I think I do here, so you don't have to use this and of course if you don't have brush show you can spatter as well. Where some of my little spatters have gone astray I'm actually using my size 2 brush here and just painting in some birds which kind of brings the painting to life as well. So I'm going to allow my painting to dry naturally to give the salt a chance to work. It didn't actually work that well. So what I'm doing here is I'm spattering some white gouache slightly diluted with my size 8 brush onto the dry surface to create the look of snow and it gives me a little bit more light as well. So here is the finished painting. I really hope you've enjoyed this tutorial. If you have any questions about this tutorial please put them in the comments section below and if you'd like to see more videos like this don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel. If you'd like to learn more about watercolour why not think about joining my Patreon membership details about that can be found on the screen or in the description below thank you so much for watching happy painting bye for now